All right, back uh, back to the uh, the old Sony camera in movie mode because I don't want to I don't want to stop working on this, but I certainly don't want to put this all back together and have you guys miss out. Come this far together, I figured the least we could do is see it through. Um, I just discovered something interesting uh, when I put this on here. I figured I'd put this on first and then use this to kind of line up that that sub assembly, that intermediate housing, and. This is sliding nicely on the greased spline shaft, but watch what happens if I bottom this out. Right at the bottom there, if I bottom it out, it's stuck right now. Pretty good. I mean, i got to put quite a bit of force on there. I mean, that sticks really... Uh, shouldn't have tapped it that hard. It's not really stuck. So you can imagine, now you're trying to use that little rod that's rocking in here to disengage that. And I'm wondering why it was sticking. Well, what I think happens is, I think when this shaft on the side here, when I flip this shaft too far, actually that's the shaft to the, uh, that's the shaft to the drive, the, uh, the other shaft, the one that's gonna go on here. And when I flip that shaft down all the way, it can go past the point where it's supposed to click in. I notice whenever I get past that point, it gets stuck. That's because I think what happens when I do that is that's when this bottoms out and hits that. What's happening is when, when the splines, the grooves were cut on this shaft, when the cutter reached the end there, it leaves a, uh, a partially, uh, the groove, the depth of the groove kind of goes like this at the end. So this is not supposed to ever get down to that point. This should not be able to go that far down. But the only thing that limits that from happening is that lever. But if you recall, when I was taking this apart, I noticed this long Allen screw going through here, which appears to be a depth stop that keeps it from going too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to readjust this to make sure that that can't go all the way down like that when I put this back together. But for right now, I'm just going to put it on there like that. And now I'm going to stick that intermediate housing back on. I almost did it again. <laughs> I almost did it again. All right. Take this off so it's out of my way. So I can put the drive gear assembly back in for this feed. Okay. So I want some oil on this. So for the purpose of assembly, I'm just going to use this Castrol High Point C gear oil because I've got some of this that I bought at a junk sale or whatever. Cheap. This is a 90 80W90 gear oil. So it's thick enough that it should kind of not want to just leak out of the thing and make a mess too quickly. What's supposed to be used, what's supposed to go in that little bearing cup at the top is, uh, I think it's Shell or Mobile Vectra 2. And that's what I will eventually purchase for this machine if I get everything up and running the way I want. I don't have any right now though and I uh, can't buy it off the shelf uh, too many places. I think it's like $28 a gallon or something like that or more. So for the time being, I'm just going to use this. Um, interestingly enough, that little bearing cup, it says that you're supposed to oil that by putting in a few drops twice a week. Well, I'm pretty sure what they're assuming is they're assuming the machine's being used daily. So you can imagine if you're using the machine daily and you're still only putting in a few drops twice a week, you don't need a lot of oil in there, apparently, to do the job. So I don't want to get all crazy on it. Um, but I do want some oil on some of these parts before I put them in. All right, Steve, that bottle's unopened. I know I don't want to open somewhere. Cool down here in the basement, so this uh, the soil should be plenty thick at this lower temperature. Let's see if I can remember how this goes together. Steps I need to take to get this to go together. 
together. Oh, now I know what that noise was I heard before that sounded like static electricity. The hole that that shaft rides in must be a blind hole. That's air bubbles coming out of there. Alright, so now... Pull this back out. It's in there. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Put that like that. And that's all there is to that. Now, put this set screw back in. Yeah, interesting. Much like the other set, uh, set screw, this one works the same way. If I over tighten that set screw, I actually am pushing on the shaft and it actually causes the shaft to bind. So you've got to keep those actually a little loose. Okay. Now I can put this back on. Again, it's bottoming out there and I don't even want to be doing that. Alright, I don't like that. This was a lot easier to put the in, it was a lot easier for me to put that intermediate housing on and then bring put this in later. So we're gonna go back to that plan. Pick it up upside down. As I suspected, I don't have enough clearance to get. Oh, actually, I have enough clearance to get the uh, ratcheting wrench on two of the three bolts on here. But I had gotten tired of doing them with like this, but looks like I'm going to have to rely on that anyways. I'm not going to over tighten those because I'm probably going to float the head. All right. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to do it right now to get this in. I don't know why I bother tightening those at all. Yeah. Dummy. Okay, now. Alright, this stupid camera shuts off after only so many minutes of recording, regardless of whether the battery is good or not. So I don't know when it shut off, but what I'm struggling with right now is getting the roll pin back in to this mechanism here that raises this up and down. I can't quite feel the point where it's supposed to go in. So there it is. Finally. So this set screw right here gets turned in, but not tight because then it'll bind on the shaft. Just to check and make sure I've got this where it's supposed to be. So that's <laughs> Didn't have that set screw where it was supposed to be. There we go. Alright, so now it's neutral. And you see that's not going all the way down, but that's because we've got to rotate the quill before that's going to happen. The quill? No, it's this quill. really binding. I think I've got to put this vertical and float the head. Oh, actually, 
The reason why it's not going all the way down is because I adjusted this set screw here, this set screw that I said is the stop screw. I actually adjusted it down too far. I wanted to get it out of the way because it's actually in the line of fire of this pin. There we go. Alright, so now if I back that screw out, I think I'll do what I want it to do. So that's the uh, that's the low range position, which before when I would turn this shaft down, this shaft would actually be able to go past this point where it locks in right here, and when that would happen, that's when this would get stuck in there. So now that I've done that, readjusted that stop. This doesn't get stuck anymore. See, if I if I slam it down there, it doesn't. This doesn't bottom out on those splines. All right, that's good. All right, just want to double check my tightness on this. Okay, I gotta have it. There we go. Gotta have it screwed in far enough so that it keeps the shaft from pulling out, but don't want it actually grabbing the shaft because that causes it to bind a little bit. That's working nice and smooth. Now, I'm going to put this in the high range position just because that's going to make my life a little easier when it comes to the next step, which I believe is remounting the big bull gear. Pretty self-explanatory. This is key to the shaft. I can tell from my little marks right here that this is the side that the nut goes on. Just like that. Then this is the very interesting locking nut. This is the locking nut that has a slice there. Groove cut in it there and this Allen screw, and then it's got this uh, more conventional slice here. So when you tighten this Allen screw, it's going to squeeze this down and cause it to want to lock on. But then there was this thing here, I wasn't quite sure how that worked. And it actually looks like what happens is that when you tighten this, it must spread those threads and help lock to the threads. I've never seen I've never seen that, but then again, I never saw a tapered pulley like on the drive box for the Vernon lathe, and I was just told the other day by, I think it uh, might have been Mr. Scott Henyon, frequent visitor to my channel, was nice enough to point out to me that that's actually uh, more common than I realize in some of this older stuff. Um, I think he said that they're actually still available even. Check that out in Vernon. Rare Vernon Lathe video part 5 if you haven't already seen it. I believe that's where I take that apart and talk about how that's put together. Kind of cool. If you're into that sort of thing, which I assume you are if you're on this channel. Follow something up here. Because I got a big gap here. Must be a spacer that I forgot. Ah, uh, I was using this camera for work the other day, guys, and I haven't charged it since then. So I just noticed the batteries get ready to die in this thing. So it's gonna put a damper on the festivities. Yeah, big old spacer. That's got the lugs on it that lock. Gauge that. Alright, I just locked the two tiny Allen 
set screws on this funky locking nut. Oh, uh, <laughs> by the way, one of them's three thirty seconds of an inch, and one of them is like seven sixty fourths or something. They're not the same size, so go figure. All right, next up, got to install this pulley. This is interesting. On the back side of this pulley, look at these drill marks where this has been drilled out. It's a cast pulley, and then they must have some way at the factory that they actually balance it by removing some of the metal here. Ah! Woodruff key fell out. So she can really keep this so faces up. Starters. Why well, I like that straight key stock. Come on. Now this is gonna be a thing. Sticker. There we go. Alright. Got my rubber strap wrench here. That's how I uh, held this pulley to loosen this bolt, so that's what I'm gonna use to tighten it. Hopefully that's going to be tight enough. I think I'm, uh, yeah, next step is I'm going to put the belt housing on, which I also cleaned in the parts cleaner. It had a lot of dirt and belt residue in there. So, if I recall correctly, I think I... Uh, maybe I did put that on with this down like this. Mm. It's, it's a heavy son of a gun, that housing. Oh, I was just about to lift that heavy casting into position and realized I almost forgot this guard. Then there's that little tube on the bottom of the, the uh, casting is going to go in here, and then of course I'm going to get the whole thing all lined up. So I'm not quite sure whether or not I don't want to attempt this in this position. That's, I've got some screws handy here, so. That's an alignment pin. Oh, no, it's not. No, I think I gotta go for it. 